Greetings, greetings, greetings. This is Lisa, and welcome to the Lisa Bubari Show. It's time to heal within. Well, good evening to all, and uh, welcome to another episode of the Lisa Bubari Show as we talk about healing within ourselves and what healing truly is. Uh, today is January. Boy, doesn't time fly? I remember only a few weeks ago we were just talking about Christmas and the holidays, and here we are. The year is already passing. So welcome. Welcome to this episode for all of you who are listening on the podcast and for all of you on Facebook. If you have any questions during this session, please text to 818-919-0228. And I wanted to let you know that tonight I have Garbus Bartanian, which we call him Chandana, as my guest again for the second time this month. And it's going to be very lovely. We're going to be continuing talking about relationships and um uh, the five languages of love, men, women, me too, the march, uh, just equality and uh, love in every aspect. So welcome and uh, let's tune in. Uh, let's do this. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Hi, Garbus. Come on in. Come on in, Garbus. <laughs> okay. Right. This is going to be a little bit tight. There's two phones, actually. So it's two phones. <laughs> We're adjusting. We're getting to learn all about this. Sideways? Okay. And uh, yes, I'm out of the picture. And, uh, let's do it. Yeah. This, try. Okay, there you there go. Okay. No. <laughs> this way. Just, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Better. Thank Perfect. you. Yes. Thank you. Thank I'll you. pull back a little bit. So, right. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. We're now good. we've got it all together. Yes. Who, whoever is on Facebook can see us mm -hmm. on my phone, Mr. Garbus's phone. So welcome. Let's uh, let's get started. Mm -hmm. I remember last week, uh, last time, last session when we were talking about it was uh, we were discussing about the five languages of love. Mm. And uh, I know the fi five languages of love. We started talking and that it was time constrained. So what I know of the languages of love is affirmation, word affirmation, mm. which mm -hmm. is the so association. Yes. And how we want to be heard, want to hear mm -hmm. from our partner, our lover. And it, it, Actually, relationship does not necessarily exactly. have to be a lover, mm -hmm. but um, any relationship. It could be best friends. It could be anything. And quality of time spent together in a way and how even sitting here, me touching your leg in this, oh. this very moment as like, okay, Let's not make fun of it, but just uh, receiving. <laughs> I'm glad it's not <laughs> Yeah, we're live. Remember this. Thank God, we're just good friends. Okay. Even our producer are, is we laughing. Are friends, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And um, that's the that's the other part of the five languages of love. It's the physical touch mm. and how we touch one another mm. and friendliness. And having the permission to touch. Of course. Right? So we have already established that throughout our friendship and everything that when we do this or when we touch or when we hug, it's the closeness and everything. So Garbis Bartanian, before we Chandana, <laughs> before we begin talking about relationships, I'd like you to introduce yourself. Um, and uh, let's start with that. I'll go first. I'm Lisa Bubari. For all of you who do not know who I am, by trade, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, and a DV consultant. And uh, Garbis, go ahead, chime in. Oh, uh, I'm Garbis Bartanian, also known as Chandana, and I'm a um, MFT associate mm -hmm. a therapist. I work with 
individuals, uh, families, couples uh, working with depression, anxiety, um, DV, right. um, domestic violence. Uh, PTSD is another area uh, that I specialize in, as well as I do give seminars and retreats on meditation. Mm -hmm. And um, so basically spiritual counseling um, is another thing that I do, right. which I appreciate about um, you know, uh, learning the tools to share. Mm. Uh, and after all, this is what this whole show is all about. That's, that's how I see it. So, um, Well, I started this show is because my website, my business for the last 18 years has been uh, through clinical hypnotherapy and stress management. It's about Heal Within. That's the name of my website. So it's, I believe that through alternative ways and augmentative ways we can tap within ourselves either uh, consciously or subconsciously uh, mindfulness and healing takes place when the person is ready first and mm. foremost because we cannot force someone to feel better or mm. uh, heal in any aspect mm. and until they're not ready they can't even go to the war, uh, to the doctor so it's when they are ready to do the healing that the medicine works or the healing begins mm -hmm. so healing within starts from the inside and uh, love in a way can be very healing it is uh, <laughs> it's it's as uh, important if not more so mm. Um, in some cases, than air, the oxygen we breathe. And, um, but the problem is that oftentimes we take it for granted. And last week when we talked about, uh, not last week, but two weeks ago, right. um, the being in love mm. versus wanting to work on being with love, with another person, experiencing right. the love. It's hard work, and that is something that um, oftentimes gets to be neglected or overlooked or completely pushed aside in today's society. When we have everything, it's, it's like uh, we want quick fixes, and it's right. always it's the other person's problem. Oh, the and, blame game? Oh, yes. The and, victim game? And then that is... Uh, I'm really grateful for Dr. Chapman to come up with this uh, five languages, which he did some years ago. And because it, it opens up a door where people can have, it brings up a, a new set of vocabulary, words for individuals. And it doesn't necessarily have to be just lovers or partners. It's the communication method that is between a mother and a child, uh, a father and a child, brothers, uh, siblings. Uh, even co-workers, because that's another area that we don't talk about. I mean, most of us have eight hours of our days, five days a week, that we have to deal with or work with in close proximity with co-workers. Right. And each of us do need, for example, you mentioned something about the, the uh, words of affirmation. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you might be giving someone a, a list of things that you appreciate about them. And it's not working. And you scratch your head. It's like, why is this not working? And I'm going out of my way and to talk to them and express that. So that's 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 another thing. And 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 um, a small gift sometimes. A gesture. A gesture. You know, one of the things that you're talking about corporate. Mm. Because I used to do corporate stress management. Mm -hmm. And when I was sending the letters to companies and organizations, I said, show your employees and staff how much you care. Mm -hmm. It's not always uh, taking them out to lunch or something like that. But a gesture of care is maybe bringing someone to do. It's become the new fad that they bring chair massages, mm -hmm. right? And what if you do lunch bags that they do mindfulness? Because that's become the buzzword mm -hmm. nowadays. Oh, yeah. And companies are doing that. They're more health conscious. Mm -hmm. So what it does is when a company does that, it's the language of love in a way of appreciation is like, I care for your well-being mm -hmm. because I work with stop smoking. 
is bringing that smoking cessation and saying, I care for your health and wellness. Mm -hmm. So here, I pay 20% or 30% or yeah. 50%. You go and become a non-smoker. Because for them not smoking, that means no 15 minutes off of work to go downstairs to smoke and come upstairs. And they smell. And the other employee who cannot stand the smell yes. is not upset. So it's so subtle. It, it yes, but it that's is an appreciation. It as is well. definitely, and it uh, we can break it down into so many series of steps. Mm. You do this, you you uh, make a format of, of, of a certain paperwork, this and that. You pitch in, you do this part, whatever. But if I narrow it down to one thing, I, the word that comes to mind is investment, and. Investment, yes. I know it's we, we usually will use that in the field of finance, etc. But investment in uh, in this case, uh, the context I'm talking about is investing in relationships. Mm. So, for example, if you're a spouse, if you are a parent, you're investing in your child or in your partner um, by, for, first of all, filling up their emotional tank. <laughs> good. That's a good one. Well, it's 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 uh, also it goes well with the five languages because that's a of that's course. a term that Dr. Chapman uses also. Yes. But most of us, if not all of us, have at least one of 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 these languages missing from our lives in a sense because it has not been fulfilled while we were growing or up or nurtured or nurtured. nurtured. So I've worked for many years as a, as a middle school and high school teacher. Mm -hmm. And it would be sometimes so surprising to to see a child or, or uh, uh, oh, we have, um, so basically, it, you, you, the parents would go ahead and, uh, I'm sad to say, buy some object. And in some cases, it would even be a car. Mm. to to try to fill that emotional tank. That's not going to work. Because it's a thing. It's a thing. It's an object the child is craving, even though they're being cantankerous or surly or just giving you attitude. But deep down, they want you to spend time with them, mm. give them a, a sense of a, a word of affirmation saying, you know what, yeah, you're getting Bs or Cs or Ds, but, you know, can I can I tell you that you're still my son or daughter? And I, I really see that you have potential. Instead of having the child come to me or another teacher and say, you know what, I cannot talk with my parents. And I have a $80,000 car downstairs in the parking lot. But I really hate my parents. I mean, these are things that I would hear as a teacher. Right. I'm giving examples from right. real life. Now, why does it have to be so? All it has to do is just you and... Yeah, but that's not going to be satisfying the child yeah. when they have the same competition happening in school. Yeah. So with that, let's keep that in mind. And mm -hmm. we're going to go on a very short break. So let us tune out so that we can tune back in. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is Lisa. Thanks for tuning back in. I have Garby Subartanian. MFT associate sitting right here and you like to call yourself Chandana. Oh, where's your headphone? Oh, it's okay. I can hear you. Oh, you can hear me. Sweet. Uh, we were just uh, discussing about relationships mm -hmm. and things that we buy for kids and we wonder, okay, I know for a fact there is a lot of people that give their children things. Growing up, I ha I was one of the, I call it now, now that I've grown up, fortunate that any time that I wanted something, my parents would get it for me or mm. buy it for me, but not when I wanted it. Mm. You know, it, eventually I would have it, but not when I was asking for it. So if it was a ball, if it was a dress or something, it would be because I earned it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that there is a lot of entitlement nowadays and there is not as much of earning it. And mm -hmm. we're talking about general, maybe 
our community uh, when we see it in so many communities there mm -hmm. is this ultra rich and then there is the ones that three families are living in one room that uh, i didn't know some children don't even have the money to have lunch and that's that's the saddest part in when we see how do we communicate i love you and well you know. it's you know love is is again we're not just talking about partner love right. or, or spouses I, mean, I or love it could be you anything. the child who's sitting and feels entitled as much as i love you mm -hmm. it, it, there is no difference between the two of you you're both in this class to study the same subject right yeah i mean it, it's it's such a what we confuse um, what we're confused about is is that love costs a mm. lot. Love doesn't cost much. So I don't. I'm not a believer or big believer in, you know, having this huge cast or or, or change or, or different classes within society um, that might dictate on the experience of love. Mm. Uh, I was just in India last month and. You would see little children sometimes smiling at you as leaving as you're leaving Taj Mahal or you're going somewhere in, in rural India, and they were showing us their faces. You know, as they're smiling, as interacting with us. There's parts of their faces that I have not seen anywhere else, in the sense that the expressions. I mean, they were showing me the smiles. I mean. We, me and my friend, they were like, just did you see, joy. this is just incredible. And my friend, he's, he's a photographer, professional photographer. He's like, I've never seen that before. So there is that authenticity, which does not cost much. And love's backbone is that authenticity. You know, love is difficult sometimes to bring into our lives. But all we have to do is just be authentic with ourselves and say, what is it that I need? And usually it is a need, a matter of a need, which sometimes we cover up with other things because we have the fear of not having love come in and fulfill us in some way, which again takes us, fear is connected deeply with sense of uh, security or the lack of. And what I've no noticed while working with individuals, and especially families and couples, is the sense of fear in relinquishing that sense of security as if something the world's going to end if i allow you to become significant enough for me to just say stop it to myself and say wait a minute could it be that you might be hurting could it be that you might need something instead of me hearing about all this noise in my clutter in my brain and listening to my inner narrative so can i really pause for a second and for a moment, just a moment, let go of my attachment to the sense of fake security. And that is the beginning of, of what I see, uh, of the sprouting of love in a connection, in between a father and a child. In okay, a, someone is going to turn around and say, but you have to know love in order to give love or share love. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are so many people who don't even understand what that is. If it's not, if they're not uh, confident about themselves, or better yet, you can be confident, go and speak somewhere, and not have self-esteem, which mm -hmm. is the value, the worth, to feel loved, or say, I've never been loved. Now you come and you tell me you love me. Mm -hmm. How can you love me, mm -hmm. right? And... Isn't it the first thing that we have to know how to love us? When we invite someone over, someone significant, someone who matters to us, mm. and your house is all a mess. There's garbage on the floor. There's the table that's been left like that, dining table, since last, I don't know, oh August, let's say. But imagine we're not just talking about last August. We're talking about even our childhood. The stuff that we have, okay, they're in our. We carry it with us in of every course. single interaction. So you might find yourself even standing at the altar, for example, saying "I do" to another person. Guess what? Either one or both of you are lying to your teeth. 
okay because you have not worked out the issues that you're talking about right. meaning, and that's where the guest comes in so if you're inviting a guest what do we do first of all we clean up we make the place ready and suitable and appropriate guests. for the person to walk in and feel ah oh, i can rest here right however we're working on our outside you know superficial things we might go and get a uh, $200,000 worth of education. We might get a $100,000 car. Um, you know, some people, you know, get uh, augmentations left and right. Uh, by the way, a friend of mine the other day told me, that you know that in high schools, the number four most common gift that young girls are getting is... Botox. Breast augmentation. Breast augmentation. When I heard this, I was like, are you serious? Well, I okay. Mean, I don't want to lose the chain of thought. Right. But, but what I'm trying well, to say is... Well, if she starts feeling good about herself, uh -huh. there's people who will say, if she starts feeling good about herself, then she has a better image mm -hmm. about her body, then she feels good mm -hmm. and she dresses better, she stands taller. Mm -hmm. So that... That in itself, it's a, a very deep rooted. But we don't but, have a problem with that. What I'm right. trying to say is, but first it should of not all, be a gift. get <laughs> the. Well, that's a different story. <laughs> well, what I'm trying to say is, when the guest, which in this case is a, right. a metaphor for the love that we're talking about, yes, if that person is standing at the altar, has not experienced genuine love towards themselves, and that's what I mean by cleaning up the house, preparing it, making it ready. No amount of houses, partners, vacations into the Maldives is going to matter. No dollar sign in the bank account is really going to make it happen. And that is one of the okay. reasons why we have over 60%, I think that's the number it was in the, in the early 2000s, of divorce rate. Because uh, I mean, if is we're it talking because they are in love with, infatuated with the the magic of it and not the reality? It of might it? be that, okay. but what the main main common denominator is the fact that there is not this foundational experience of love within oneself. So where do they go and find this authentic? The first question that needs I to be I call it heal within. What was well, valid? What is, Okay. The first question that needs to be asked is, okay. Uh, How do we help our audience? Yeah, it's the question is, why am I afraid? Why am I afraid of being alone? What if they're not afraid, or they don't no. know they are? <laughs> well, that's that's the thing. Okay. When you're constant, here's an ex here's a, a good, good experiment. Ex good. Okay. Okay. Uh, so do this experiment in order very for you simple, to know. Very simple. Very simple. It doesn't cost a thing. In okay. fact, it might save you some money. Uh, go ahead and turn off your phone. Mm -hmm. All right. That's easy. Not now because you're going to miss out on the show. Uh, put it somewhere else. Put your phone, in fact, on, on silent. And where, whichever room in the house or place you're in, go ahead and put your phone uh, in, in the closet, in your cupboard, somewhere. Okay, out of the way. Out of the way. All right. Next. Next. Turn off your uh, whatever it is, electronics Gadgets. or whatever. Sit down by yourself, with yourself, okay? If you okay. feel comfortable having a notepad or a journal, I, I'm a big proponent of journals. Um, uh, and just go ahead and just sit there by yourself for no more than three to five minutes, by the way. You don't have to commit the rest of your life to this. And see if you can go ahead and just... Just be. Just be. And maybe, maybe, if, without forcefulness, if you feel like you can say something good about yourself to yourself. Loving. Something loving. Mm -hmm. And a good experiment for this is in the morning, uh, before you head out the, the door, stop in front of the mirror and say to yourself, damn, you look good. Darn. Not damn. Darn. Okay. Or, oh my. <laughs> yeah, it's a damn word. <laughs> Just to say that. Now, that coming from you is much more weightier, in fact. Yes. 
than anyone else. Of course, saying because it. the person you are looking at is looking at you. Exactly. And there was nothing more powerful than instead of standing in front of the mirror. I, I I believe most people do when they're getting ready to go somewhere and they're doing the combing and they're doing everything. That's when they do it. But what we're saying is, this is not for you to get ready to go anywhere, but just pay attention to the person looking at you and be loving to that person. Because, mm -hmm. sorry, mm -hmm. the first person, the only person who hears you first and foremost is you. Mm -hmm. And every thought that you think or comes out of your word, the first person is this ear hears it before anybody else. So all the internal dialogue, mm -hmm. if we shifted by even a wink mm -hmm. at the mirror with a smile or a rah-rah, that in itself shifts energy, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like the different pieces of a puzzle. Mm -hmm. It's... Um, how how do you do you enjoy your company? Now that person Heck standing yeah. at the altar, and we're not asking about you, but <laughs> uh, the person, the two people in the, standing at the altar, for example, uh, which is a beautiful sight in itself. However, I would like to see them in isolation and see how they treat each, themselves alone. Mm. Um, one of the greatest things to to do to kind of get yourself familiarized to this feeling of love is to dance by yourself. Yeah. Now, Dr. Christiane Northrup says the PhD Christian. level of this is to do it naked. Naked, right. <laughs> so that's... that's In front know, of the mirror. Uh, well, hopefully the windows are <laughs> shut, whatever. But what I'm trying to say is how well... I mean, when was the last time that you yourself... Are you asking me? Well, you know, um, have gone to the movies by yourself. Oh, how many times have you actually went to a nice restaurant to just eat by yourself? Mm -hmm. I mean, there have been books that says, uh, you know, that I've seen titles that Take say Take yourself something. on a date. No, something on the opposite extreme, which says never go out uh, or something along the lines of like never eat dinner by yourself again type of oh, a thing. Oh, right. And it's like, what a sad, sad situation because I have to be fun to be around by myself, first of all, in order for me to I have to, to actually, like me. Yeah. Yeah. Before I ask you to like me, I need to be fun to be around. And well, I'm not necessarily fun, but acceptable. No, I have to enjoy myself. Okay, enjoying is different than fun. <laughs> well, uh, we will, I guess, disagree on that one. <laughs> okay. But because... Can we agree to disagree? We can absolutely do that. Wonderful. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's just a matter of um, openness and mm -hmm. allowing it. Because so many people are afraid of, of being alone. Mm -hmm. If you're afraid of being alone, uh, there are facts of life. You know, the suffering exists in life. There is suffering. And uh, we came alone and we're going to go alone. I've said this for, you know, to my students, I used to say, to the clients, I've said it. But it's a fact, not to paint a gloomy picture, but it's a fact. I mean, just go to a senior home and you'll see it. Individuals who've been married or been with someone for 60 years even or more, all of a sudden sitting there and they're by themselves. And some of them are all, you know, Alzheimer patients or dementia. All these things are kicking in and, and you feel that sense of sadness. But the key thing here is to remember that there's a difference between loneliness and aloneness. Aloneness is, is yeah, aloneness is a wonderful capacity to really feel like you can stretch your toes into this bed that's called life. And you can just stretch yourself and really <sighs> and in that space, believe me, your guest is gonna break that door or door to come into your life. And that couple standing there at the altar are really going to hug and really say to each other, you know what, I love you. Or I really want to say I do because I do. I have no other choice. This is it. I, Irrespective I, of other factors. Hopefully all couples who stand looking at each other, um, it's because they are enhancing one another's life. Mm. My grandmother used to have a saying and she would say, May for the ones who are saying I do, 
It's not about gazing at each other's eyes like lovers, <laughs> but gazing at a distance, at a goal together. Mm. You know,、mm-hmm. if both of you have the same goal, same thing that you are going forward in life, that will take you much longer than just in front of each other and not seeing where you're going to the journey. With that, we're going to take a few,、uh, a one-minute break, and we'll be right back. Until then, let's tune out so that we can tune back in. This is Lisa. Welcome back, greetings, greetings, greetings. This is Lisa, and you are back on the Lisa Bubari show. Well, we're talking about relationships. We're saying I do. I haven't said I do in such a long time. <laughs> Not that I have many times. So I'm gonna ask you a question, Garbies.、Uh-huh. What could you not live without today? I mean, now in life. Hmm. Awareness. Awareness of who I am, what my life's lessons have taught me. Awareness of the people that I care about, whether I'm on the opposite side of the world. In a place where I don't know anyone, and I've been to quite a place, quite a few places like that,、mm-hmm. and that sense of aloneness comes in, and I look at myself, and I'm grateful, appreciative of the fact that I have a body. I've had good parents who've done their best, and at the same time, I also have the sense of love towards everyone that I've come across. But all of that means nothing if I don't have the sense of awareness. And which which brings it for me、uh, the sense of tranquility of mind, and there is less noise when you have tranquility of mind. It gives me room to experience the other person when I touch the other person's face, for example, when I hold their hand, when I look gaze into their eyes. I see, I'm there, and that is a good sense of comfort. That's that's true security. When when your lover, when your partner is looking at you. And is just there for you, making themselves fully available.、Uh, the image that I'm getting right now is that of a soccer ball in the middle of a field,、mm. open field, vulnerable, completely there. And that is what I mean by saying, being okay with ourselves. And we cry by ourselves. We do these things, and, but basically, we're developing the sense of intimacy. Now, I'm very intimate with myself. I'm very、uh, comfortable with myself. It took me many, many years because I kept looking outside of myself into the world、okay. for sustenance. Now, for our viewers, how do we practice becoming comfortable、mm-hmm. with ourselves? A lot of people are not comfortable with themselves.、Yes. Okay. The easiest thing that I would—it's、um, this is coming from metta practice. Metta is a loving kindness meditation、okay. that I teach.、Um, one of the very easiest aspects or steps of this is quite simple, and it involves、uh, just sitting comfortably,、um, comfortable chair.、Uh, you may rest your back against a, a chair, whatever, but. Giving yourself anywhere from five to ten minutes to twenty minutes, and as you advance, you can go thirty minutes or so. But just bring to mind a thought, a, a, a memory of you having experienced something. It might be from five minutes ago. It might be from five years or fifty years ago.、Um, and just close your eyes. Don't imagine the details or whatever. But just ask yourself. But first, we have to allow ourselves to kind of. What、settle. kind of an image were you talking about? It's、a、not an image, image per se. It's actually a, a feeling. Okay, a feeling. Metta is not about thoughts. It's in fact ninety-five percent of it is about feeling it, and、okay. we feel in our bodies. Right. So it might be、uh, for me. It's actually in our、uh, balcony where my grandmother used to sit on the sofa. And back then, my dad hadn't built this roof over the balcony because it was a huge balcony. So we could actually see the blue sky. And it was a summer day. And I just laid on my back, and I didn't have anything to do, and I just looked up. And to me, that gives 
the sense of such a deep, deep sense. I mean, I, I was living in yeah, I was living in war torn Lebanon at the time. Okay, right. let's. But that was my, you know, looking at the infinite blue sky with you know, peppered here and there with some white clouds. But I was just like, wow. And I still, even I'm talking about it right now, I feel it in my knees and going up, and I feel the sense of warm, fuzzy feeling in right. my chest. We all have this. We do. And that's one of the things that I usually uh, help my clients with, that if you feel or you have a memory that is feeling good at that very moment, just tell yourself, bank this moment. When you bank that moment, just like what you did, that moment becomes embedded in your muscle, muscle mm -hmm. having memory. So when we want to take ourselves to that feel good place, and it can be by yourself or with someone else as a childhood memory, that moment is the moment that we uh, not necessarily cling on, but we bring to surface. We mm -hmm. evoke it and we embrace that and we evolve into that moment so nothing else matters. And it is a right? choice. Of course. It is a choice for you to sit there and dedicate five minutes. Mm, it's you. a choice for you to go ahead and, you know what, this is all nonsense. I heard it on a radio show with these two goofy characters, whatever. But let me give it a shot. It's my life. It's my memory. Let me go back and experience something close your eyes no one has to see no one has to know in fact you might even do it while you're sitting in the bathroom you know but just go to that moment and just feel it in your body you need to you speak so you felt it in your body we feel trauma in our bodies we feel anger we feel rejection in our bodies we feel anxieties in our bodies so the body keeps the score like dr van der Kolk says he's a trauma researcher right. world renowned so uh, what then becomes it's it's all about choice love is about choice and many many tiny choices when your mom was saying i look over to the future as a goal grandma. so that grandma sorry and the whole point of it is it's a series of tiny little saying of i do's left and right when things are not nice when you see your lover or your partner or your son or your daughter doing things that are not going in mesh with what you told them to or why are your clothes on the floor why do i have to always take the garbage why do i have to why die why 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 and then because they're tired of doing it themselves all the time and what they say is not being done well right you don't have to be like you know a member of the gestapo in in a relationship what you really need to do is remember why you're choosing to wake up next to this person in the family or to have this family grow together i mean in the case of families you have your own children and family members that you can't just sever your bonds like a divorce ah but garbies you just talked about something that it's truly important nowadays with the other things we're not no <laughs> it's about the bond it's yes. about we don't have family time together mm. over table, over dinner. And especially nowadays, everyone is so stressed mm -hmm. that even partners, lovers, husband and wife, when they've got kids and everything, they go to the restaurant in order for them to have a conversation. They put that video thing in front of their child so that they can have five minutes. Do you remember that story about the parent who bought $80,000 or $135,000 car? Right. It's their way of compensating for that. They, it's not like they hate their child or no. they're trying to bribe them. No, they don't have the energy to sit down and communicate heart to heart with their child. They don't have the energy to, the capacity to even ponder that possibility. Instead, it's much easier for them to sign off that check, to take their uh, their spouse to Maldives and to the fanciest, you know, first class hotel, first class airlines, this and that. But there is no nothing there because they hopefully, don't have time to spend. Well, hopefully, that's, that's why we're talking. Right. We're doing this. But what we're saying, I think what we're saying, if I'm not mistaken, is you don't have to go so far yes, to find each you other. You don't. Right? Absolutely. It's, yeah. That's what I mean. That love doesn't cost much, yeah. except for you being courageous enough to say yes. 
when the clothes are down there and they needed to they needed to have you know had to take it up pick it up you don't know it's like that uh, story that actually happened where um, giving space giving our you know having patience enough in that subway in New York mm. when the, the this man with three kids gets get, gets on uh, on the on the train on the and train. it's like 5 p.m. and the kids are incredibly rowdy they're jumping on other people's chairs and pulling on newspapers right. and the man is sitting like, like that like you know veg, like a vegetable and Somewhere. the other adults want to you know discipline the children and then finally, there's such a noise by the produced by the children that the father just comes to his senses. Blows he's up. like, and he's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry." And he gathers his kids around him, and he turns to the other people and he says, "We're so sorry. Their just mother just lost. died yeah. died in the just in the lost. hospital." And everybody's intense anger Shifts. just whoosh, drops. Yeah. So we don't know what's going on in people's lives and and all it takes is a little bit of you know what yes now i'm not saying go ahead bend over backwards to just you know uh, make this thing work which is destined to failure i'm not saying that either what i'm saying is i mean we have to have the responsibility compassion. to pull ourselves from toxic relationships but we have to have the compassion to say yes and forgive ourselves and the other person and see if i can continue saying i do it's not once that you say i do it's saying I do to this very moment and going on a one minute break and we will return in just a moment. Let's tune out. Stay with us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Lisa and welcome back to the Lisa Bubari show and it is time to heal with it. Relationship, love, what a beautiful talk and it can get really heated because i'm sure there's going to be questions and one of the questions was uh um when do we when do we say uh i love you but uh i mean children want to be accepted we're talking about teenagers uh, the love, the puppy love of a teenager, the love, the misconstrued love of uh, how boys physically need and a woman, she, the girl wants to be loved and wanted and, you know, that's a different love than when we are more adults and understanding that love is a choice and there is a lot of responsibility that goes with uh, the mature love versus our teenage loves because we are, come on we fall in and out of love as teenagers all the time well not just teenagers i'm, I'm surprised to look at 30 year olds 40 year olds or more or even younger obviously and see how people use the words like oh i love this team i love this car uh, I love this food. I love, I love, I love, I love. Because in English, they, there is no other love. The better word to no. describe. I mean, in Farsi, there's five ways of saying I love. In Sanskrit, there's a hundred. Okay, well. <laughs> so, uh, but what the whole point is, um, it's not the words. It's not the vocabulary that I'm, you know, we're, we're addressing. It's it's the usage of it. It's it's uh, it's uh, been unfortunately Misused. bastardized. Yeah. And oftentimes we don't even stop and say, "Wait a minute." They love celebrities. <laughs> I mean, uh, but we're not here to just point fingers and, and right. this and oh, that. Yeah, what what point is? There's different ways of expressing and accepting. So, coming back to just uh, the five languages, in a sense. Um, you might offer me a whole slew of uh, words of affirmation, and if that doesn't register with me, by the way, that's that's one of the key languages for exactly. me. Exactly. But auditory. Uh, well, yeah, tactile. But what yeah. the whole point is, um, if that is not my language, uh, and my language is spending more time with my loved one, and I'm not getting that. I mean, they might write me a whole letter every single morning before they left and saying how great I am. This it's Eventually, really, it's going to end up in the trash. And I'm just like, oh, really? I was like, Pfft. but, you know, that's not going to be. So uh, the, the thing that makes it work. So I need to explore 
how I want to be loved. Exactly, but with myself first, exactly. so that I can how actually. I want to be loved, yeah. so I can share it with you and say, "This is yes. this is how I love being loved." And that actually is, you know, sometimes with some couples is asking for the moon, because they cannot tolerate to be that vulnerable with each other. That they spend, you know, they they spend their time in the same bed. Okay, they live in the same house, and but they cannot tolerate or see themselves even getting that vulnerable. The veils like come us. off. Where it's like, uh, well, I like you know lots of service. That's my love language. I like you to you know do the laundry for me. I like you to take my my clothes to the Acts cleaners. Acts of kindness. Acts of kindness. Right. Or or I would like to get every once in a while. A small gift, for example, anything. Right. So that might be another language. Token of appreciation. Yeah. yeah. And and you know, or the quality of time. That's big in my book, you know. But if it's if it's something that I'm just looking at the world around me, like the media and what they promote as, mm. I mean, I used to be in jewelry Valentine's. design. I used to work in in uh, New York City and uh, jewelry design. And back then, there were no De Beers ads. Right. In 95, that's when they had the contest, this and that, and I participated in that. But what happened was they wanted to make people in the States buy solitaire, the actual stone, the main diamond in the right. centerpiece as a solitaire rings, right? Mm -hmm. And they didn't know how to sell it because there's so much of it, tons and tons of it. Hallmark so, has done a good job. Well, guess what? You have Sex in the City. You have other movies that came out. And it's like, how big is your rock? That, unfortunately, has become a, a measure of, of love. somebody's love. What, how much they spend on this person. So, uh, unfortunately, that's ludicrous. That has no place in the world that we're talking about, which is pure and genuine love. Yes. If it happens, that's happened. But there's more deeper things. And uh, we ha yes. we are running out of time. Yes. It's unfortunately uh, seems like we can discuss this every <laughs> week, and there would be something that we can talk about. Yes. In closing, um, thank you for all of you who are listening, either on podcast or live right here, right now with us on Facebook, my Facebook, Garbus's Facebook, and you can find me at healwithin.com. By the way, ladies, I do have an event coming up. It's a day dedicated to us. It's an incredible day uh, with amazing speakers, and it's called 3 e event.com you're going to be hearing out more about it but you can go to that website number three e event.com and learn more about it's march 24th in the meantime you can also find me on instagram lisa bubari and garbus would you please share what is your instagram yes um, it's uh chandan uh underscore garbis so it's c-h-a-n-d-a-n underscore garbis g-a-r-b-i-s and if anyone has a question they can actually you uh, email me directly it's g bartanian no okay. space or even on facebook on facebook too okay. so um g bartania gmail by the way okay so thank you for having me thank you this is an awesome thing <laughs> ladies and gentlemen thank you for being with us it is now time to say goodbye and i wish you all the best god bless you may the universal light be with you this is lisa mubari and it's time to say goodbye.